Action for Sport rejecting uh, Castor Semenya's case that athletes should not have to reduce their levels to compete in international track and field events. Pause it. Let's see. Transgender runner loses court appeal. So they must be... I don't fucking know. Castor Semenya is a runner from South Africa. She is a decorated two-time Olympian in the 800 meter and a three-time world champion. Notice how I said she. Many people reacting to the decision have mischaracterized Semenya's identity, calling her transgender, she is not, or male, she is not. But hey, this is Fox News. Not fair, not balanced. Not factual. Notice how they transition from one story to another. The new regulations go into effect this month. And a transgender weightlifter under fire after breaking four women's world records in just one day. The company of misogyny associates Semenya, who is not trans nor is she a man, to another transgender athlete, a political prop to spew their anti-trans agenda. They did issue an apology, but it lasted as quickly as Rick Pitino in a Louisville restaurant. In that story, we said she was transgender. She is not. We apologize for that error. This case, however, requires a deep dive into Castor Semenya and the injustice she faces. She is an athlete with hyperandrogenism, or elevated levels of male sex hormones. Thus, a court examined if she is considered different because it is believed she has an intersex condition that makes her body naturally produce a high level of testosterone. She was born this way. Her body responds this way. And now, she is penalized for it. In order to compete in the biggest international track events, Semenya has to take medications to decrease her testosterone level. If she declines, there is no place for her on the grandest stage. She must keep her testosterone levels at the limit consistently for six months before entry into competition. If she does not do so, she must compete against men. As Dave Zirin pens, it's the equivalent of making Joel Embiid play basketball on his knees because he is deemed too tall, or forcing Michael Phelps to wear weights on his feet to negate the advantage. The Court of Arbitration for Sport ruled against Semenya's appeal, controlling her body with this decision. Her biology has been under scrutiny since 2009. Sex tests have been mandated. And now this, not regulated similarly, female javelin throwers, pole vaulters, swimmers, basketball players, any other female sport that requires strength, speed, and size. Just the running distance of 400 meters to one mile, Castor's specialty. What's odd is this, Semenya hasn't actually broken any all-time women's records. You would think with elevated levels, she would. The majority of the athletes breaking 800 meter records have never been suspected of hyperandrogenism or any disorders of sexual development, DSD, where exactly is the evidence of Semenya posing an existential threat to women's sports? How can a governing body award the losers and denounce the winner to level the playing field of a God-given gift? While she has posted inspirational tweets on her timeline, this is discriminatory and displays the levels of sexism and racism we see all too very much. Case in point, Serena Williams. That is a record. Wow. In 2018, Serena was tested for performance-enhancing drugs five times this year by the U.S. Anti-Doping Agency. That is more than twice as often as other top American women players. Even the Russian Tennis Federation president, Shamil Tarpeshev, referred to Serena and Venus Williams as the Williams brothers on a Russian television program, which, of course, Serena was questioned about. I thought his comments were very insensitive, sexist as well as racist at the same time, and, and I thought they were, in a way, uh, bullying. On the basis of sexism, male athletes are not subject to any testosterone regulation, no matter how high their level. The panel found the regulations are discriminatory, but that such discrimination is unnecessary, which I deem odd. Discrimination is necessary to confront an authentic athlete in every way of the word, but fault her for being who she is? Oddly enough, check this statement from IAAF Prez Sebastian Coe. The revised rules are not about cheating. They are about leveling the playing field to ensure fair and meaningful competition in the sport of athletics where success is determined by talent, dedication, and hard work rather than other contributing factors. The IAAF does not want the naturals. They want the subpars. 
and dumbed down champions. They do not want the Michael Jordans, the Bo Jacksons, the Lisa Leslies, the Simone Bileses. They want the middle of the pack unnatural parody to ring true and serve as dictators of sport. Their goal is parody disproportionately affect a champion to mid-level because someone like Lindsay Sharp cries on television. The public can see as well. <laughs> Sorry, it's how, how difficult it is. Um, with the change of rule, but... This rhetoric is a signal. Caster is subhuman. She is not female. She is a cheat, which is not the case. She is competing within the confines of her body without supplements. This is a dangerous precedent, but it has been set. And now the unknown for Caster remains. If you'd like to hear more thought-provoking content, like TYT Sports on Facebook, and to help in my journey to keep media independent, go to tyt.com rick.